Hello and welcome to another segment of Western Wisconsin Journal. I'm Jamie Johnson and I'm the government and legal correspondent. And uh, we're heading into election season. We're taping this actually on the eve of the spring primary. But uh, the race that we're looking at now is the Hudson City mayoral race. And we have uh, candidate Joyce Hall. Joyce, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So Joyce, uh, as folks may know, is in her third term on the Hudson City Council. And uh, we're going to start the interview, Joyce, but just tell us, our viewers, a little bit about yourself, your qualifications and background, and, and then, you know, for serving a mayor, maybe throw in there why you want to run for mayor. So, okay. all right. All right. Well, um, so let's see. I've been on the council, of course, for um, almost five years now. And um, I've been the council president for two years, uh, then elected by the other council members. Then uh, I've been on a number of committees. So I've previously served on the park board and on the library board and as the liaison to the school district. Um, currently, I'm on the finance committee on the uh, public utilities um, commission and on the cable board. Um, and let's see. So. My background, um, I've got a PhD in chemistry. Um, I'm also um, a mom and a grandmother and uh, uh, been living in the city for about 10 years now. And just, I love Hudson and um, I'm glad I've had the opportunity to serve Hudson. Um, so. So you mentioned being on uh, the council and having served on all those committees. What would you say would be some of the accomplishments that you've had being on city council? Well, first of all, nobody does it alone. <laughs> and um, so uh, the things that have gotten done have all been group efforts. We've got um, the employees, we've got the committees, we've got uh, public input. And um, uh, so all of those get um, taken into account. But I've listened to and acted on the, my constituents' concerns. And, and those have been the main thrust of my... Um, and now, which district is it that you represent? I represent District 6, which is the northeastern part of the city. Okay. So the high school and the middle school are in my district. All right. Um, so it, it seems like some of these things are little things, but they take a lot to get things done. Um, and I, you know, installing a street light in an area where it was too dark and uh, the and it really needed to they really needed the light there. Um, fixing street issues and drainage. Um, but I, some of the things that I'm uh, the most proud of are getting the city and the school district working together on the safety issues behind the high school. That um, was a, a big concern and um, brought to my attention. It took a while for me to get things going there. Um, another thing that I've been working on and that is coming to fruition is getting a speed hump policy put together. So speed humps are a traffic calming measure. They're used on residential streets uh, to slow down the traffic uh, because people have to slow down in order to go over that uh, speed hump. And so we, we want to be trying some, some of those out probably the summer. So we'll start with some temporary ones and see how they work. And then we'll um, work to per with permanent ones once we repave the streets. And so that, um, I've been working with Mike Mirage, the um, Department of Public, or the Public Works Director, and then um, Dean Chamberlain, the city engineer, to develop that policy. And we should be taking that to the Public um, Safety Committee very soon. So I'm, uh, I'm glad about that. Um, another thing, though, that I've been um, successful in is keeping tax increases to a minimum. And all of us on the council are very careful stewards of tax money. Um, on the Public Utilities Commission, uh, we've got Well 10 ha has been built and, and opened up. Um, you've probably seen it when you've gone down um, 35, uh, just south of I-94. On the east side, there's a, a new building over there, and um, that helps to provide water to the city. We're also, um, we've got the expansion and the overhaul of the sewer uh, plant ready to go. And um, uh, there will be some better methods that uh, for um, treating the sewage um, that will be better for the environment. So uh, that's, that's, that's big. Then I've been a strong advocate for the dog park and the pickleball courts. And um, of course the dog park is already in there. Um, the pickleball courts, even though I'm not on the park um, board, I'm still um, very interested in making sure that we get those pickleball courts um, built. And um, I hope that they'll go in the summer. I've um, listened to the residents. Uh, one of the 
they've had some concerns, particularly in the historic downtown residential area, uh, about some of the development that was planned, and they didn't like the the way that. Um, uh, things looked and how it would change the character of the neighborhood. Also the same with um, the neighborhood near the Atwood property over by Carmichael and, and Vine. And um, so I've listened to the residents and acted accordingly and we've been able to make some modifications on things to make sure that the neighbors aren't uh, to are feel comfortable with what's going in there and that it's not going to disrupt the character of their neighborhood. Um, so those are the things that Okay. That I'm proud of. Well, um, just as far as the job of mayor, it's certainly different than being uh, the council president, but what do you feel is the mayor's most important responsibilities? Well, um, I think that um, the mayor sets the tone for the city. And um, as mayor, I want to set a welcoming tone, a respectful tone of um, respecting everyone and including everyone. Also, a um, making sure that um, listening um, to all points of view is, is important to me, communicating on a regular basis, um, making sure that um, the development integrates with the, with the neighborhood, as I talked about before. Um, developing a plan to get the streets fixed is another important thing that uh, I'm, I will be working on. Um, and then leveraging grants whenever possible. Um, and then supporting inclusion of everyone 365 days a year and treating everyone with respect. But the um, most important part is, um, is, is leading everyone, um, the employees, the council, um, and in the public. So um, one of the things that, you know, in reflecting <laughs> for this interview and thinking about all the changes that I've seen in the city, and um, I, I realize in how much the city has changed um, because of the, the change in personnel. So one of the things that has happened is that um, five years ago when I uh, first joined the council, Scott St. Martin had just been um, brought on as uh, fire chief. And then since then, all of the department heads have turned over, most due to retirements, but um, some for other reasons. And we lost a lot of the institutional knowledge, which is huge, and that's a, uh, uh, that can be a real problem. Um, and so then a lot of the projects that were in progress got slowed down while the new people were working on just learning their job and things like that. But what I found is that we've got these new employees. They've brought in fresh, a fresh perspective on the city issues. They've uh, brought in ideas from the previous cities that they were um, uh, working in, and um, and then a different kind of energy. And I am seeing not just an energy but a synergy. They are working together. There's um, teamwork. There's um, just um, a um, a different atmosphere in city in city hall because of the the change in the the personnel and um, then you combine that with the changes with the city council so since I've been on the city council um, three of the council members have have changed and um, you know we're all good we all have the best interests of the city in um, in mind with all of our decisions that we make. We're respectful of one another and um, work well together. And so we've got that. And um, so I'm, I'm really excited about the future of the city because we've got all these people working on things and we're looking at, uh, so there's more grant money that's being applied for. And so um, hopefully we'll be able to be even better stewards of the, the taxpayer money and things like that. So um, I'm excited about leading the city. All right. You talk about leadership, and um, that's one of the mayor's most important responsibilities. How would you describe your style of leadership? How would you expect to lead? Lead by consensus, listening to all points of view, finding out what people want me, what what the people want the city to do, and how they want it to do it, and then putting that into action. Okay. And so. And you mentioned the future, so you're excited about the future of Hudson. Mm -hmm. What do you see as the most important issues to be addressed by the city council in the next two years? Well, uh, we've got the comprehensive plan, and so there's a lot um, to that aspect. But before I talk about the comprehensive plan, I want to talk about, um, in talking to Chris Cost at the um, YMCA, he said, you know, the five most important 
items that need to be addressed in this area. The top three are mental and um, physical health, including um, addiction issues. And then um, there's also uh, income appropriate housing and then public transportation. So I think that those are probably the most important things that need to be looked at. Um, one of the things, so with uh, mental health, at our last council meeting, uh, I recommended that the city do some leadership on, on mental health issues by looking at what we have at the city level for our employees. So for example, you know, do our benefits cover mental health crises well enough? Um, also employee satisfaction. Do, are there some areas in the, the city where the employees are stressed and that we need to make some changes in order to improve that issue. Um, and then also advocating for better mental health um, uh, coverage through the the state and the federal governments by writing some letters to our um, our state and federal legislators and looking at and, and county as well to to see what what we can do to uh, to advocate for better mental health um, resources. Um, and then, um, but physical and mental health are closely related and so we need to also be looking at physical health and making sure that we've got bike paths and um, pickleball courts uh, and um, other recreation facilities here in the city. And we do have some, so we want to make sure that we continue to, with the upkeep of our parks and making them um, um, make sure that they're welcoming and that uh, people want to, to use them. Um, so anyway, then we've got um, public transportation. We need to put that into the, uh, in the comprehensive plan that we would have some type of um, a bus service, so very similar to what River Falls has, a shared, shared taxi, um, so that we could, and putting things into the comprehensive plan means that the employees are aware of these needs and, and interests for and, and the comprehensive plan should be based on what the people are looking for and, and interested in. So then the employees know to be watching for things like grants on public transportation. Um, also income appropriate housing is another issue, so making sure that we've got a plan that will include uh, not just more apartment buildings but um, also some um, you know, possibly some townhouses and some um, single family homes that would be more affordable maybe through some grants for for people who are well well employed so thing, people like the teachers the um, our police officers um, some of the other city employees they're working here in the city and they can't afford to to live here we need to help them to to be able to do that um, so I think those are the most important issues that um, the city should be addressing. Okay, and then do you see areas where the city could reduce spending um, without reducing services? Well, first of all, the, um, the city is very well managed and I don't think that there is a lot of excess spending, but there are some opportunities though. If we could get some grants to uh, put in some solar energy, that might be a way of saving some money and also being better for the environment. Um, and uh, looking for th opportunities like that. The other thing is um, looking for those grant opportunities in all of the areas, not just uh, you know, for, for solar or for um, transportation, things like that. We need to be watching for those. Okay, so you're not necessarily looking to you know, cut uh, the budget, but if there's areas where grants could be available it might end up seeing some savings to the city. Yes, and uh, the city is applying for some um, transportation grants for helping with uh, some of the recommendations that were made for, for Vine Street, and um, I hope that we are able to get those grants because that would make a big difference in the safety along Vine Street for our uh, students. Okay. Now, what's your position then on allowing or limiting uh, more residential and commercial development in Hudson? It's kind of a, a two-part question, but we'll start there. Just general position with regard to either allowing or limiting that, that development. Well, I think that we need to, you know, as I said before, we need to respect the neighborhoods and their atmospheres. Um, but we also, um, we, do, we need more, uh, more of the income appropriate housing, so apartment buildings, things like that. Um, Annexing land, there is a 
that's part of the comprehensive plan already is annexing along Car the Carmichael Corridor for, for more uh, business development. And I think though that the biggest issue is making sure that it is well planned and that we have the infrastructure available to manage that. So for example, with this Atwood property, we've uh, realized that there are street issues that need to be solved before we can add more traffic to Carmichael and Vine. So we need to be looking more carefully at that comprehensive plan and are the streets going to be able to uh, handle the, the traffic? Um, are there other issues that need to be addressed? Uh, we do have enough um, capacity with the, the water and the sewer, so I'm not worried about that. But also, you know, we need to very carefully manage things so that we're not building more streets that we're adding to Hudson um, without having a plan to fix the streets that we've got. So those are the kinds of things that we need to be watching for in, with annexation and uh, development. Okay. But, um, I, we do need that development in order, we want to broaden the tax base as much as we can so that we can uh, maintain our property, maintain the infrastructure without having to increase taxes. Well, as you point out, um, east of Carmichael, there's been, uh, that's been an extra territorial zoning part for at least two comprehensive plans. Um, and generally it's about a 10 year period for these comprehensive plans. So why do you think it is that we haven't seen more development east of Carmichael than we have, and why do you think it is that it took that long for the Atwood property, for instance, to be developed? Mm. I mean, that, that's been a cornfield <laughs> for the 30 years I've been in the Hudson area, and everyone knew that was you know, where the city's headed, but why do you think it's taken that long? Well, the Atwood property, my understanding is that um, the the woman who owned it, she did not want it developed until after she had died. So, uh, um, so nothing was done until then, and that was only that was fairly recently. So once that happened, then things started to to move move forward, and and it took a couple of tries before the city found the right developer too, to because um, there were there was a lot of interest, but uh, not everybody was ready to. Um, meet the requirements that the city put out. Um, and so in order to have, all right, so you can't leave any islands <laughs> of the town of Hudson right. um, and, and, and everything has to be continuous. So certain properties have to be developed first before you can get to the other ones. So the Atwood property, that one is a key. Yeah. Now that that one is being developed, then that will open up some other um, areas and the, but the other thing is that we've got some of those um, residential uh, or there's a couple of residential properties um, without those getting developed um, then some of the properties on the other side of the of, of Carmichael we can't develop those okay so and annexation is going to be a and, and obviously infrastructure is a, a big part in that mm -hmm. and uh, you mentioned Carmichael and Vine already a very busy intersection. Um, so you, do you see that that, and it's there that 15 to 30 minutes in the morning when the backup from uh, on Vine Street is all the way back to the YMCA, is that going to be improved then once this Atwood development um, goes in? And we have to get that <laughs> fixed, and I'll continue to advocate for that. I'm not sure what the um, the solution is, uh, but I think we need to also we need instead of widening roads, I think we need to look at other things. Maybe a um, a staggered start for the the high school, so that we'd have because mm. uh, you know the, the school district is talking about later start for the, the high school. So maybe a staggered start might be a better idea in order to um, smooth out some of the traffic issues. Um, but you know, there's a, an opportunity for the school district and the city to, to work together and I think that okay. those are important. Well, that's uh, sticking on the subject of infrastructure then. So do you find the city's plan for maintaining and or improving the city's infrastructure? Is it sufficient or not sufficient? Why or why not? Um, we need to fix the streets. <laughs> that, that that's obvious. Um, our water and sewer needs are planned and budgeted. I'm not worried about that. Um, but the the main thing is the uh, is getting the streets fixed. 
and, and there, um, that's one of the things that, uh, well, I'm already working on it, but you know, I've been talking about, or thinking about, you know, day one, what do I need to, to do on day one? And um, one of them is establishing some office hours and listening sessions. Um, but uh, the, the next one is start a plan for um, getting our streets repaired. And that's going to be a long process because of the expense in, involved. But we need to have a plan and we need to be watching for grants so that we can leverage those grants, things like that, because that's going to be... Um, uh, important. Um, you know, now, now you mentioned, um, you know, trying to get help with this. You know, we're on the subject of infrastructure mm -hmm. and everything, and um, we talked about d commercial development, residential development, annexation. My understanding is that there's currently a moratorium now on annexation. Um, and where do you come down? Is that something that you advocated for? Um, and is there any kind of time limit if the state doesn't come back with any sooner timetable than 2025, uh, as one of the years that they've mentioned, or maybe even later? Um, is the, are you content with the city not going forward to uh, do further residential commercial development waiting for the state to come in and res rescue them, so to speak, from at exit two? Well, I don't see how we can, well, all right, so first of all, there is a plan in place to make improvements to Carmichael and to Vine so that we can manage what we've got going in. And now is that, are those city plans or, or state funded plans? Uh, Vine Street is, um, is city um, funded and also some of it is coming from the developers for the Atwood property. Okay. Um, and I'm not sure about Carmichael, how much of that is state. Some, um, I'd have to check on that one. Uh -huh. but, um, but your question was, do we have a moratorium? Do I agree with the moratorium? Yes. I drive, in order for me to get home from a lot of places, I have to drive through Carmichael and Vine. And I certainly don't want it more congested. I, it, mm. we, we need to make sure that it can handle the traffic that will be generated by the, um, the development that we're, we're putting in. And um, I suppose part of that is, yeah, congestion is just a matter of timing. And as you said, you know, the school could look at changing start times, but um, have there been traffic studies? Do you know? I mean, you've served on some of these different committees, but has anyone said like what the peak time on Carmichael is and so forth? There have been traffic and pedestrian studies recently on Vine Street. Um, Carmichael, there have been some studies on that as well. I don't know what the peak times are, but um, uh, Glenn, the traffic engineer from SEH, has uh, done a lot of that work and he's presented it, but offhand I can't remember exactly okay. what he said. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, moving on then from, well, infrastructure, um, certainly the roads, you would say repair of roads, but infrastructure deficiencies are specifically the uh, city uh, sewer um, water and sewer department was used as an excuse for a long time for why Hudson couldn't expand. Mm -hmm. uh, that seems to have changed. Well, yes, because we've got, um, so when Vine Street has, was redone, then larger pipes were put in. Um, and, um, you know, Kip Peters has just <laughs> done a really good job of making sure that the the infrastructure is getting fixed in order to um, improve the system overall, and he's, um, you know, had inventories done of <coughs> what we've got, um, and um, uh, even though I'm on the um, Public Utilities Commission, I can't tell you all the details, but um, he's, as each street gets opened up, <laughs> then uh, the new infrastructure gets put into place. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now, um, Directing in different, we've talked about Atwood and we've talked about Carmichael and Vine area. Um, what are your ideas as far as redevelopment uh, down in the Lakefront Park area? We're talking about First Street and. Mm -hmm. Well, um, the the main thing um, for me with um, Lakefront Park and, and that, that area is, you know, I want a place where people will enjoy gathering, um, enjoy the river be able to exercise, so you know, be able to use the walking and biking paths. Um, 
a way of supporting the both physical and mental health. Uh, you know, good place to take a break and just. So enjoy you'd the be sunshine. advocating for retaining Lakefront Park as a park and not developing anything west of First Street. Um, very careful development there. Um, you know, we've got the, that lakefront plan, um, and you know, a lot of aspects I agree with. I think that uh, you know we should be doing some more with the um, uh, the, the pier uh, and uh, things like that. Um, but we need to make sure, though, that we still re retain that atmosphere of, of you know, a place to recharge. Okay. So right now, the changes we've seen so far are on the east side of of First Street, mm -hmm. and uh, you see that as um, as a plus, um, the fact that we're kind of um, fronting some of those buildings down to the river mm -hmm. instead of having them be the back end of buildings that are fronting on 2nd yeah. Street. Sure, you know, any development that makes downtown more inviting and enjoyable to be <laughs> is always good. Um, and I think that, uh, yeah, the. Um, the development that we've got going has uh, you, been good. Uh, do you see, um, with regard to that redevelopment in the lakefront area, because obviously you have the river there and uh, we have the one boat landing, which depending on mm -hmm. uh, the amount of precipitation we get in the year, we get a lot of flooding and that mm -hmm. can't be used as much or limited anyway. Um, you know, do you see the development being something that should encourage boat traffic um, or have um, a limiting effect on that? No, we need to support um, boat traffic. So what's going on right now is a um, there's a plan in place to improve the, the boat landing and um, make it so that it is still usable even during the um, the high water <laughs> when, okay. when the water gets to the high water mark. So, so yes, I, and I support that. I, I we just voted on that um, that at last meeting or the, the meeting before. So, okay, it's in the works. All mm -hmm. right, very good. Mm -hmm. And while we're talking about downtown area now expanding it beyond Lakefront Park, um, how do you feel about the next steps? Um, on parking issues. Parking has been a source of discussion and certainly has been um, a well-studied <laughs> subject. Yes. Um, um, big investment in mm -hmm. the new uh, parking uh, system, but um, it's also come with, uh, any, with like any change. There's some complaints that, that come along with that. Oh, yes. And uh, although you don't, your area that you represent isn't just, you know, doesn't overlap with the downtown. It's more up in the northeast section. Um, how, what are you seeing as the remaining parking issues and what, what areas might afford some opportunities for improvement? Well, first of all, I think that the, um, we need to do a better job of educating people on how this parking system works so that they know what they need to do and if something isn't working, what to, what to do about it, you know, who to call. And then um, making sure that they know how to use the, the Passport app if they are interested in using it. Um, but, you know, I keep hearing from people saying, why, why can't we just go to free parking? Well, we had parking studies done, and free parking is not an option if we want to maintain uh, uh, parking. So the goal of the parking system is to have always have a, a few open spaces on each block so that when somebody comes downtown to enjoy a meal or to do some shopping, they can feel confident that there will be a spot available downtown for them to use. And in order to do that, you, you've got to have some parking regulations. Now, with a system like this, yes. When uh, Okay, so five years ago when I first was... Uh, interested in getting onto the city council, there was a presentation on smart meters. And I remember very clearly that the presenter said, what's going to happen is once you install things, you're going to have lots of complaints because everyone is going to be used to the old system and they don't like change, but they're also used to not having 
not having to be compliant because the system didn't work. So we had a lot of meters that didn't work. Uh, the uh, parking enforcement wasn't very often. And so there weren't a lot of tickets that uh, occurred. So he said, there will be um, more tickets, but that's not the goal of the parking system is to write tickets. The goal of the parking system is compliance. If you get people moving, and, and so then the parking study that was done showed that people needed about two and a half to three hours to do the um, the shopping or the, um, uh, or the dining or, mm -hmm, yeah. okay. that they wanted to do, and then they'd be able to move out. Um, but we'd need some adjustments for things like, you know, events at the FIPS, things like that. And this parking system is flexible enough that we can build those things in there as we go. But the first, the first step is to get this working properly and get everyone educated so that they're using it. And so you see it, uh, the initial next step would, or, or the, the, the next step, we're still in that first phase, mm -hmm. is education. Yes. And the police department is working on that. So the, um, the, the parking enforcement personnel that were hired for this are spending less time driving around ticketing and more time watching for people who are feel, looking confused about where to go and, um, and park. We're, we also made some decisions, uh, let's see now. So at our last public safety committee meeting, uh, one of the recommendations that we made was um, uh, to reduce the number of zones uh, so that all of the three-hour parking spots are in the same zone. And then that will reduce some of the confusion because if people don't know what zone they're in, then they don't know which parking um, station to, to go to. So, okay. there, you know... It's good. yes, we're gonna I, we're gonna experience a lot of frustration for for a while, but we will get it fixed. And I have a lot of confidence. I've been on the public safety committee, um, my my whole time on the um, uh, on the council, and we'll work together. We will get it fixed. And the you know I've talked to the police chief about it, um, and um, you know he's aware of what's going on, and he's he's making um, changes. The other thing is that. Um, um, we've got um, Mike Johnson, the um, assistant city administrator um, slash um, community development director. He is um, he should be able to make incremental changes without uh, getting authorization if if, it, if some simple things need to be made. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess uh, we're getting close to the end of our time okay. here. Just mm -hmm. wondering if there's other issues that you feel you know maybe the mayor, um, the council ought to be addressing. Um, I, th we, yeah, you know we didn't talk too much about the um, uh, the comprehensive plan, and some of the things that I would like okay. to see in the comprehensive plan would be um, things like a an inclusion statement. Uh, I, I want our city to be a warm and welcoming place, and an inclusion statement would uh, make a difference. And then um, we need to consolidate the uh, public works garages. They're <laughs> they're scattered across the city. Um, that needs to be done. Then uh, another thing that um, I think would be important to to put into the comprehensive plan is to watch for an opportunity. So we've got the, um, the library and the police department both in a building that wasn't designed for either of them. And um, I believe that the um, police department, uh, there's, there's some plans, um, looking at some uh, plans to, to move closer to the government center. And I think that would probably be a good fit um, and work well for the, the city and the, the county. Um, and the library, from a, a literacy standpoint, it's not a good idea to have the library and the police department in the same building. And the reason for that is that there are a lot of people who have low literacy who are afraid of the police. So they, where's the best place to, to do tutoring, uh, volunteer tutoring? At the library. Well, they don't want to go near the library if the police department is there. So it's a good idea to, to separate those, those two functions. Um, but also, we've got the parking issue downtown. So I think that it would be a good idea to look for, watch for an opportunity where we can have 
a place for the library that's got good parking around it. So I was thinking, so for example, when Family Fresh closed, I thought that would actually be a good opportunity. That would be a good place for the library. There's plenty of parking. Um, there's, uh, you know, it's a good sized building, things like that. So if it's in the comprehensive plan, then the employees will be watching for opportunities like that. And then that building is, um, is a valuable building. It would be good to put that on the tax roll. We'd have to take off an, another building off the tax roll, but probably a less valuable uh, building. So we'd probably be able to get enough for the building to handle a lot of the costs involved. And so then it would be a win-win situation for the city. So those are the kinds of things that I would like to see put into the comprehensive plan. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, very good. Um, it looks like our time is up, and we really appreciate you coming on. And we've been speaking to Joyce Hall, candidate for mayor of the city of Hudson. Uh, Joyce, now the election is April, April 7th. 7th. Mm -hmm. All right, yes. first Tuesday in April. Good. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you, and I'd like to ask everyone for their vote. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, thank you. And uh, if they, people want to know more about your campaign or where you stand on issues, do you have any kind of website? I have a website, hallforhudson.com. Hall for Hudson, okay. And then I've also got a Facebook page, Joyce Hall for Hudson Mayor. Very good. Joyce mm -hmm. Hall for good. Hudson Mayor. Says it all right there. Okay, thanks for coming thank on. You. And thank you for watching another segment of Western Wisconsin Journal. I'm Jamie Johnson, and keep watching.